And let's consider another use of complex anal analysis, namely uh, the application to two-dimensional elasticity problems. We recall the Hooke's law in uh, three dimensions for um, isotropic materials. Such materials are described by two parameters, namely the Young's modulus capital E uh, and this Poisson ratio. Normally we describe Hooke's law by taking the stresses on the left side and uh, the strains on the right side combined with some parameters. Uh, here we describe the Hooke's law in terms of strains. So what is this? This is a strain in x direction, this is a stress in x direction, this is a stress in y direction and z direction. Um, Moreover, we have, uh, in, in addition to these three uh, equations, we have three equations connected to the shear strain. Uh, the shear strain in xy direction is just 1 over uh, capital G, with, which is the shear modulus described by the Young's modulus and the Poisson ratio as follows. So, we have this condition and we have a similar condition in the yz direction and zx direction. Well, that's the Hooke's law. I hope you have seen it before. Uh, we have two special cases in uh, for two-dimensional problems. Uh, the first uh, is plain stress problems. In plain stress problems, uh, we assume that uh, this, the stress in the set direction uh, is zero. So going back to the Hooke's law we assume that all these um, stresses sets, uh, sigma set uh, are zero. So it's zero in all these equations. Um, we then get um, two uh, equations for the strain, a third for for uh, uh, the strain in set direction, but it's usually not important, it's not necessary to know this. But uh, if we want to know this, uh, this strain, we are able to get it from this Hooke's law. In addition, we have uh, this identity, the shear strain in the xy direction and we do not um, use these two uh, identities for plain stress problems. So this gives us this, um, these three equations. Plain strain problems are another type of um, two-dimensional problems which we uh, usually, uh, very often, consider. Uh, and in this case, we, for plane strain uh, problems, we assume that the strain in the set direction is zero. So, for plane stress, we assume that the stress uh, was uh, zero, but in this case, we assume that uh, epsilon set is zero. So that means that uh, sigma set should just be equal to this Poisson ratio uh, multiplied with the sum, sum of the stresses in x and y direction. So by express, expressing um, the stress in set direction by, by these two uh, stresses, uh, we can um, uh, we can insert this uh, expression uh, here and here and we then obtain the following um, equations. So we get this equation and this equation and the shear uh, strain equation is just the same as before. It's not changed at all. And we ignore the shear strains in, um, in the x set direction and the y set direction because they are uh, normally not interesting for us. Uh, 
let's just recall that this strain in the x direction is uh, indeed the partial derivative of the displacement in the x direction which we usually call u uh, so the partial derivative of this with respect to x uh, and the strain in the y direction uh, is similarly the partial derivative of the uh, displacement in the y direction uh, with respect to y so we are par taking the partial derivative of this um, displacement in the y direction similarly we have that um, or not similarly but uh, the the shear strain is in fact um, uh, in the x di x y direction is defined as the partial derivative of the displacement in the x direction with respect to the y direction plus the partial derivative of the displacement in the uh, y direction with respect to x uh, if we now uh, take the, uh, the partial derivative of this identity uh, two times with respect to y, we obtain the following. Similarly, if we take the derivative of this with respect to y two times, uh, uh, sorry, with respect to x two times, we obtain this identity. And Similarly, taking the derivative of this expression with respect to um, first x and then y, we obtain uh, the following expression. It's very easy for you to, to see this. So we are going to use this um, in order to obtain uh, the compatibility condition. So the compatibility uh, conditions are uh, is um, uh, proved directly by using uh, these two, uh, these three uh, identities. Yes, and why is that? Uh, the reason for this is that if you just look at this third equation, we observe that this term is exactly equal to this term. Uh, which is uh, the, uh, equal to uh, this expression um, and this term is identical with this term. So then we of course obtain that uh, this guy is equal to this guy plus this guy. So that's the reason for the compatibility condition. And we are going to use this compatibility condition uh, later on. In addition to um, this Hooke's law, law, we have uh, the following equilibrium equations for the stresses in two dimension. We don't uh, write this in three dimension because we are only considering in this uh, course the two dimensional problems for simplicity. Um, but we have the following equilibrium equations uh, and they can be proved, uh, proved by uh, using the uh, Gauss theorem. In fact, we are not going to go into details, but it's uh, uh, possible to, to show that these two equilibrium equations are met. So if we are replacing uh, this strain in the x direction and y direction and the shear, st shear st uh, stress um, uh, in, um, in x and y direction with the stresses expressed by using the Hooke's law in star here uh, then we obtain uh, the following we, know, we re recall that uh, this strain in x direction is given by this expression in the Hooke's law and the Hooke's law also tells that the strain in the y direction is given by this and we have that the shear st strain uh, is uh, given by uh, by this expression uh, in fact I, I said uh, 
as said opposite uh, on this part. This is not, uh, it should be the shear strain here. This should be gamma xy here instead of uh, uh, the shear stress. Sorry for this. But you saw it uh, probably anyway. Uh, so then we obtain uh, this equation. Uh, and this equation we can manipulate a little bit. We can uh, we know that the uh, Jung's modulus uh, is a constant, uh, at least for the problems we are going to consider. So uh, we can take this constant out of the derivative sign. You see here, this is a constant, so we can replace this in front, also here, and uh, even here. The Poisson ratio is also a constant. Um, so, in order to express the right hand side with, this, uh, with respect to sigma x and sigma y, we differentiate this um, double star. Let me show you. The double star is this equation. We differentiate this. Um, with respect to x and y. And what do we get then? Well, then we get these two equations. We differentiate the left hand side and the right hand side is just zero. Uh, so um, taking the derivative of zero, we obtain zero again. Uh, and here we have this uh, third um, um, equation concerning the shear, the shear stress. So the reason for doing this uh, is that we now see that we are able to uh, express this um, um, the share the the stresses and the derivatives of the stresses uh, in this equation with um, uh, the with this expression. So inserting so let's take for example um, this guy we identify with uh, this when we take the partial derivative of uh, sigma x with respect to x here we, we have the same expression here so we can re replace this guy by minus this guy so this can be done for all these three equations. We can insert this into this equation and then we obtain the following. Um, so we get an easier equation, in fact, which we call triple star. Let us just mention that we obtain the exact same equations in the case of plane star. Drain. We have now considered the plane stress situation, uh, but uh, we can use exactly the same proof in the uh, case of plane strain. Let's now consider the following two vectors, this vector and this vector. And we now recall uh, the Helmholtz theor theorem, which um, tells that um, any curl-free vector uh, can be written as the gradient of some scalar function. So what we are doing here is that we are recalling what the curl is. Go, just go back to the lecture concerning Helmholtz theorem and uh, you will see what the curl of a vector is. And in this case we can just add a zero uh, to this vector just to, to get uh, a three-dimensional uh, vector here and here and because we do not ten have any de dependence in the set direction and taking the curl of this function we obtain that the curl is just the partial derivative of sigma x with respect to x plus the partial derivative of uh, the shear stress xy with respect to y and uh, due to the, um, the equations uh, concerning stresses um, 
we know that this is equal to zero. Let me just show you. This was one of the first, yes, these equilibrium equations. We are using them in order to show that the curl of these two vectors uh, indeed are zero. So we obtain that both uh, uh, these vectors are curl free and this gives us that uh, according to Helmholtz theorem uh, we have that both vectors can be written as uh, the gradient of a scalar function and we call this scalar function relative to this vector b and uh, the other scalar function uh, a. So, well, writing out these uh, components, uh, we obtain the following. Um, these four identities, uh, just check this. We have that the partial derivative of the scalar uh, b with respect to x is equal to minus um, the shear stress, and so on. So, this means that if we know, um, observe the following, the right hand side here is exactly the same as the right hand side here, so the partial derivative of b with respect to x must be equal to the partial derivative of a with respect to y, what we have written here. But this is exactly, this term is exactly the curl of uh, the vector a b zero. So we know have an additional vector which is curl free, and this vector uh, is just this uh, k vector, which is the unit vector in the set direction multiplied with this, uh, and it's uh, zero because of um, uh, this relation. So another use of Helmholtz theorem shows that this vector must be the gradient of a new scalar function and we call this uh, scalar function capital U not U uh, so that we are not confusing it with uh, we, we should not confuse it with uh, the displacement in the x direction so um, what we then obtain if we take uh, no the uh, we know that um, the derivative of um, of um, the si sigma x is just um, the derivative uh, no of um, well we have the expression here the derivative of b with respect to y and we know that b, uh, b is just the derivative of uh, this capital u with respect to y so uh, if we take the uh, derivative on both sides here, we obtain that and use this uh, this equation. We know that sigma x must be equal to the partial derivative of capital U with respect uh, the, the, um, with respect to y two times, uh, and similarly we obtain that. Yes, we can take the uh, sigma y is uh, equal to the partial derivative of a with respect to x and a we know is this uh, guy so we just take the derivative of a with respect to x here and see that uh, uh, sigma y must be equal to the second derivative of uh, capital U with respect to x. Uh, and finally, we obtain by um, by this identity that the derivative of uh, a uh, with respect to y is equal to minus uh, this shear stress, and we know what a is. A is the derivative of u with respect to x. Uh, so, just taking the derivative of a with respect to y here, we obtain that this must be minus uh, this uh, 
uh, toe. So therefore we obtain this identity. Well, no, we have these three identities and combining this uh, three identities with this triple star equation uh, that was proven earlier, uh, we we obtain directly the following equation. So we we just insert this into um, we insert the expressions above into this equation and obtain uh, the B harmonic biharmonic equation and it takes the following form. This equation is important for two-dimensional elasticity problems and uh, will be uh, considered.